Hey, this is Jonathan Bukhara for Fluency++. Today we're going to see how to find your way around a legacy code base. Approaching a legacy code base can be difficult and even hard for motivation because it's code that you don't understand easily. So let's see five ways to find your way around a legacy code base. Number one, you need to find one thing across the whole code base that you perfectly understand. That can be even just one line. For example, imagine that your application does something related to calculation and you have like a linear interpolation, then if you can pinpoint where that interpolation occurs in code and recognize it, then you perfectly understand that line. And if you understand one line of code, then chances are you can figure out the, the line just before it and the line just after it. And this way you can expand the scope of code that you master and work your way from there. It's like finding a stronghold and use it as your base to go off and conquer the world. Number two. For this one, you need to sit with someone who knows the code base a bit, at least, like your manager, for example. Or if you're a manager, then this piece of advice is for you. It consists in finding a good representative call stack in the application. So it needs to be a call stack that shows a typical use case of the program. So you need to know what a typical use case looks like, right? So you sit down in front of it and then you dissect it. So you look at what's in this call stack and it will show you the layers of your application. You can even show in some debuggers, you can even show the names of the, of the module. Visual Studio allows that if you do right click show module names and then you're going to see how your application is laid out in terms of layer, right? And it gives you an overview of the architecture. Of course, that would be just one snapshot, one stack. So you need to do that with several stacks to get a broader overview. Number three, start from the input or the output of the application. So let's assume that you understand some of the functionalities of your application. Then you can see like in the UI or the interface, in, in general, where inputs come in and outputs come out, right? It can be like a button or a text field or anything in the interface. Then you can spot that and try to find it in the code. If you understand what that is in the application, then you will understand what that is in code, except that you see how this is coded. Right? So this particular place you're going to understand and it can give you a stronghold and that goes back to advice one. Number four, use refactoring to understand the structure of the code. Doing a refactoring forces you to actually put your hands in code, right? And you need to understand what you're doing. So you need to understand what the code is, is doing. But not all refactorings are as useful in terms of getting knowledge. So there's one kind of refactoring that's very useful. It's the kind of refactoring that does decoupling. So if you decouple two pieces of, of code inside of the application, then you'll see some structure, right? It may even create some structure. For example, you can start really small, like you can find a big chunky function and split it into several sub-functions. It can be just as simple as that, but you'll see the local structure of that function that was big and doing quite a lot of things. Or another example is to decouple process from data. What does that mean? Imagine that you've got an object that has processing and data in it, and you have another object that also has some processing that uses the data of the first object, which is weird, right? Because it creates coupling between the two classes, because one fiddles inside of the other one. 
So one thing you can do is extract the data outside of the process and mutualize it between processes. This will show you how the process works and, and what's the structure of that process is in code. Number five, find a padded room function. So what's a padded room function? So you know like these rooms with padded, padded rooms, wall. you can't hurt yourself. Well, there are functions that don't have dependencies on anything else, but that can be tricky to understand. So I'm calling that a padded room function because it only goes so far, right? If you go out and try and understand it, then it has a finite scope and you won't have to understand all of its dependencies and all the dependencies of the dependencies and you won't ever finish that kind of task. But if you have one function, even if it's a bit hard to understand, it has no dependency, then it has, it has limited scope and it gives you a feel of the style, of the coding style of this application. And it, it gives you training to read that kind of code. I'm not saying that all padded functions are well written. Actually, if you have a big chunky function, chances are it can be improved. But it will train you to understand code quickly. And this is a skill you want to get, because you need to understand code quickly to make it better. So these were my five tips to find a way around a legacy code base. So find a stronghold and can care the rest of the application. Find a couple of good stacks to analyze. Start off from the input or output of the application if you don't find any other place to start from. Make refactoring that decouples the code and train yourself in a padded room function. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, you can subscribe to the channel to get more of them. And if you liked it, put a thumb up. Thank you and I see you next time.